What's up, future respiratory therapists? In this video, we're going to be talking about a specific aspect of pulmonary function testing known as the FEV1%. You're not going to want to miss this. Let's dive in. All right, so as I stated in this video, we're talking all about the FEV1%. Before we start that, as always, do me a favor, head over to respiratorycoach.com where you can find the resources available there to assist you in passing those NBRC credentialing exams on the first attempt. I would appreciate it if you would do that. Uh, let's talk about the FEV1%, but let's start off by talking through a practice exam question. So here it goes. Spirometry reveals an FVC of 4.6 liters, an FEV1 of 2.4 liters, and an RV to TLC ratio of 62%. Which of the following is a likely diagnosis? Here are the answers. We're going to come back to this in just a second. I want to show you how you answer this question. So when we talk about the FEV1%, there is uh, this is going to be a calculation that you may or may not have to do. You may you may be given what that FEV one percent is, um, or uh, you may be given the values that you need to calculate it. If we go to Egan's thirteenth edition. Uh, this is uh, chapter 20, page 398. It says it right here. The forced expiratory volume in one second to vital capacity ratio. That's the FEV1 divided by FVC, also known as FEV1%, uh, is how you calculate it. So those are the two numbers that we need. Uh, we need our FVC and we need our FEV1. Now, to make this make sense, it's important to understand, it's like, well, why do we need those numbers? And what we see here is if we do what Egan's tells us to do, if we take the FEV1 and divide it by the FVC, then like so many things we do in respiratory therapy, we end up with a ratio. And what that ratio is, is basically this. The FVC, or the vital capacity, is the total amount of volume that was exhaled during the spirometry test. The total from a, from, from, a, from a breath all the way in to all the way out. And then we keep going, keep going, keep going. And at the end of that, you were given a vital capacity. If you do it forcefully, you will have the forced vital capacity. Now, when we perform that maneuver, what the spirometry device does is it cuts it up into various parts. And so it says this was the total that was exhaled. The FEV1 is the forced expiratory volume in one second. Now, think about that. FVC is total. FEV1 was how much came out in the first second. So when you divide FEV1 by FVC, it will give you a percentage of how much volume came out in the first second. Let's look at some numbers here. This patient here on the left, these are two different patients, okay? Patient here on the left, their vital capacity was 4 liters. Now their FEV1 was 3.5 liters. Now we're going to do the math, but doesn't it sound like most of the volume that they exhaled in totality came out in the first second? Do we, need to, do we need to really do math to know that, that we're going to find a number that's going to be very, very high here? And when I say high, I mean high in percentages-wise. It's going to be 80, 90%, something like that. Let's see, what our, let's see what it comes out to. So we do. So we're going to do this formula here. And what we're going to do here is we're going to do 3.5 divided by 4. So 3.5 divided by 4 equals 0.87. Five. So that's 0.88. Now, FEV1% is represented in a decimal, but what that tells us, the story this tells us is that essentially 88% of, of the total volume came out in the first second. Now, does this sound like a person or a patient who has a pulmonary disease or disorder that prevents air from coming out normally? It doesn't, right? Because most of it came out very, very quickly within that first second. Now, when we look over here, we find something different. You see, we don't even need a calculator for this one because this time we're going to do 2 divided by 4, and that's going to give us 0.5. You see, 50% of the total volume came out in the first second. 
That's our FEV1. So our FEV1% is 0.5. And that's what it explains. Now, does this sound like a person who has a pulmonary disorder that, that prevents, delays, slows down? Does it sound like this person can get most of the volume that they exhaled? Can they get it out forcefully in the first second? And the answer here is no. They cannot. Now, the number you're looking for here is 0.7. Anything less than 0.7 is going to be classified as an obstructive lung disease. Those are our CBAVs, our cystic fibrosis, bronchiectasis, asthma, chronic bronchitis, and emphysema. They're all going to have FEV1 percents that fall below the normal threshold of 0.7. And so we see that this patient here is an obstructive patient to where this patient is either is we don't know if it's restrictive or normal because we don't have the rest of the numbers to be able to calculate everything else but what we do know is that this person currently right now does not have an obstructive process preventing airflow leaving their pulmonary units and their airways at a normal rate that's what we know from this so we go back to the question what we'll find here is is uh we have a spirometry gives us an fec of 4.6 now when you're looking at these questions and you're, and you're taking these exams, you have to know what's valid and what you need to collect, right? Well, FEC of 4.6 liters, okay, uh, with an FEV1 of 2.4 liters and an RV to TLC ratio of 62%, which of the following is the likely diagnosis? We need our FEV1 also. So now what we're going to do, FEV1 divided by FVC. And what we get when we do that is... Uh, we get 2.4 divided by 4.6. That gives us our FEV1% equals 0.52. That is less than 0.7, and therefore this is indicative of an obstructive process. Now we go down the list and we find the obstructive disorder. Pulmonary embolism, that is a no. Pulmonary fibrosis, that is restrictive. Lung cancer is a no, and the answer to this question is likely emphysema. Now, we can take this one step further because if you're thinking to yourself, well, what about this little, what about this number here? What did that tell us? Well, when we understand that this person has an obstructive disorder, that means they can't get all of their air out with ease, they are obstructed to expiratory flows, what it tells us is there is a very high chance that this person air traps and what we mean by air trapping is that they take a volume in when they exhale because of the obstructive process all of that air may not come out so it stays in the lungs it stays in the pulmonary units and that's what we refer to as air trapping now as we air trap chronically over time over time over time this leads to chronic hyperinflation and what we see here is another ratio the rv to TLC. That means what's the total lung capacity? Now, how much of the residual volume makes up for the total lung capacity? And in this patient, we see it's 62%. RV typically should be somewhere around 20 to 25% of total lung capacity in the, um, the uh, normal or healthy uh, human lungs. Okay. And so we see that, that 62% of their entire total lung capacity, if we were to draw it like this, is up here. This is residual volume. And, and it's taken up more than, 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 than 60%, 62%. That is the result of chronic hyperinflation due to air trapping, a byproduct of their obstructive lung disease. That means they can't get all the air out. And that's why this answer is even more so emphysema. And that is the FEV1%. You're going to have to know it. I tell you, I tell people all the time, I was like, look, I know pulmonary function testing is difficult. And, and, and it's not the easiest thing in the world to grasp, but that's because it's not fun to learn. And so what we do is we have to make it make sense. Just think about the disease process and what might happen. And when we understand what true obstructive lung disease does and is, then we see it's obstruction to expiratory flow. And then that helps to make some of these numbers make more sense when we dive into it. Okay, now I will say this is a very basic um, uh, demonstration 
over the FEV1%, and it is by, by, by far not complete in totality in everything you need to know about pulmonary function testing in identifying an obstructive or restrictive lung disorder. But to my students out there, to my, to my, to my uh, first, second year students, if you will look at the FEV1%, it will guide you in at least identifying that there is an obstructive component present and that'll help lead you to the correct answer. So um, I hope it helps. I'm Respiratory Coach. Stay here with me on YouTube. Also follow me on the socials, Instagram and TikTok at Respiratory Coach, uh, LinkedIn at Joe Lewis, and then don't forget about the website, respiratorycoach.com, where you can find all your resources to help you pass your TMC and CSE exams on the first attempt. And remember at the end of the day, average is easy. Don't be it.